Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, my talk today is about Felix Vallotton, the artist, anarchist sympathizer. And it's a questioning talk in every sense of the word. Um, I'm interested in his response to events that took place in Paris during the so-called era of assaults, when the city endured what one newspaper described as an unrelenting wave of violence, much of it attributed to anarchists. Between 1892 and 94, 11 large and unexpected bomb explosions killed 10 people and severely injured dozens more. They were interspersed with a spate of smaller, non-deadly blasts and hundreds of bomb threats. Some of these acts were the responsibility of known anarchists, but many were the work of unknown perpetrators with unidentified goals. Anarchists were behind a number of them, but which exactly was anyone's guess? The mood in the capital during these years was one of heightened anxiety and fear, made worse by the press, which published columns like Anarchists and Dynamite, and printed front page images of bombings that collectively transformed the attacks into media spectacles. And you can see two examples here from 1892. Counterterrorism also caused widespread panic. Heavily armed police officers patrolled the streets of Paris using strong arm tactics and intimidation to search, detain, or arrest anyone they suspected of being part of a great anarchist conspiracy. Living in the midst of this was Félix Vallotton, a Swiss artist who had moved to Paris in 1882. Because he left the city only occasionally during the early 1890s, he experienced at close range the physical and the psychological effects of much of the era's violence. I'm interested in his response to this, which hinges on a larger issue. The challenge intellectual radicals often face when confronted with extreme versions of radical practice. Volatone was undoubtedly an anarchist sympathizer, confirmed by his close friend and fellow anarchist, Jean Morin. But the nature and the depth of, of his beliefs is difficult to determine. He never wore his politics on his sleeve and barely referred to him in be referred to them in his letters at this time. He did publish a few images in the anarchist press, but most of their dates fall after 1894. We do, however, have the evidence of several of his woodcuts from the period, which I think express with remarkable candor the convulsiveness of the era. I'm going to run through them quickly first, and then I'll go back to one that I want to talk about in detail. Um, the Anarchist from 1892, the demonstration from 1893, the attack from 1893, the fortifications, the assassination, and finally, from 1894, the execution. Now, I'm going to focus on the anarchist, which was likely inspired by the anarchist Ravachol, pictured here in a police photo, who set off two bombs in Paris in March of 1892. The first exploded in an apartment building just a few blocks from Volatone's residence. Its target was a judge who had sentenced two men to prison for defending themselves against the police in an anarchist demonstration. Sixteen days later, another bomb went off at the residence of the prosecuting attorney in the same trial. A few days after the second attack, the police arrested Ravachol as he was leaving a Paris restaurant, the event recalled by the scene here in Volatone's print. Ravachol's trial began in late April, the night before which another bomb exploded in the restaurant where he'd been apprehended, killing two men. At the trial's conclusion, Ravachol was extradited to his hometown and tried again for crimes he'd committed earlier, including grave robbery and murder. He was sentenced to death and sent to the guillotine in July of 1892. I'm not the first to associate Volatone's anarchist with Ravachol, as you can see by the cover of this book from 1992. Yet, Volatone's title is generic, so he must have intended this as an expression of what all anarchists signified. And what we see is a stereotype. The anarchist is young, perhaps a student or an intellectual. He's angry, he's withdrawn, and he may be hiding something, perhaps a weapon. He's also an aberration, signified by the reversed N in the word anarchist. It's unlikely a technical error. Volatone wouldn't have made over 100 impressions from the block if it had been. Like the mistake in the word describing him, the anarchist is also a mistake. He deviates from the social norm in his role as a suspected criminal. Yet Volatone's image is also sympathetic and critical. 
It's not apparent this fellow has done anything to warrant the strength of the police response. Why have the authorities deemed him dangerous? Do they know he's concealing a weapon? Or does he simply, simply look or behave like the anarchist type? He couldn't possibly be a match for these men, given their numbers and the disproportionately large bodies of the officers in front of the restaurant. A similar scenario appears in the attack, where the men in the foreground receiving beatings from the police not only are outnumbered by their attackers, but show no evidence of having done anything wrong. And in this case, I think their political affiliations are not the point. Like the anarchist, this print also features a young person being apprehended by the police. He or she, I can't figure out if this is a man or a woman, he or she too is represented a bit ambiguously, however, with a flat and reductive face, suggesting perhaps the primitive, or as one critic said, the degenerate, another popular stereotype of the anarchist. By picturing oppressive authority and choosing the Paris police as its agents, their behavior came under fire repeatedly in the anarchist press in the 1890s. Volatone shows his stripes as an anarchist sympathizer. As we saw in the attack, he chose a reductive style and employed caricature in the anarchist to enhance his critique, flattening the bodies and reducing the details of the officers in the foreground and making the two officers in the background appear bloated or stupid. The anarchist, in contrast, is more formally complex. He's more volumetric, and therefore, I think, more fully human, largely because of those myriad delicate wrinkles in his clothing, which Volatone stroked in so gently. The ambivalent character of the anarchist sets it apart from many of the period's other visual responses to Ravachol, whether conservative, like the image on the left, where he's depicted as a gunslinging madman, or anarchist, like the one on the right, where he's framed by the wooden legs of the guillotine and wears an expression of stoic pain and intelligence. Both are equally ambiguous, um, sorry, unambiguous. In one, he's named and reassuringly brought under control. In the other, he's the heroic revolutionary martyr. These were the extremes most often resorted to in characterizing the anarchist terrorist. He was either criminal or hero, demon or saint. Anarchists, of course, preferred him as hero or saint, but not everyone was as certain about that as Shah Morin. There were also responses like Henry Bowers, the old communard anarchist and drama critic for the Echo de Paris, who wrote after Ravachol's first bombing, if the insurrections of labor and the rebellion of the poor seem to me in certain cases to be excusable, if not legitimate, I don't rightly know what argument of social science could be invoked by the raging madmen or the bloody imbeciles who go out and put bombs in private residences. Even Peter Kropotkin, who had called with such confidence in 1879 for permanent revolt by word of mouth in writing by the dagger, the rifle, and dynamite, had revised his opinion by 1892. He admitted that Europe's authoritarian structure cannot be destroyed by a few kilos of explosives. Which brings me back to Volaton. Perhaps the ambiguity of his anarchist is symptomatic of his own uncertainty about the cataclysm of, of, cataclysmic events of 1892. Never an activist, his letters and the accounts of his friends reveal an overwhelming desire on his part for an uneventful, ordered, and economically prosperous life. Morin mockingly called it his sublime preference for bureaucracy. A letter Volatone wrote to his brother Paul in November of 1892, a few days after another anarchist bomb had exploded in a Paris police station and killed five people, is telling. Paris is pleasant, Volatone wrote, but the political unrest interferes with everything. Anarchy alone will benefit from all this, and without doubt, we shall shortly be seeing its effects here. So Volatone was already convinced that propaganda by the deed would not change much of anything. In fact, he seems to have feared it would only serve to propagate itself. But it sounds to me as if he was just as vexed by the disruptions it caused, which may have inconvenienced him. Consciously or unconsciously, Volatone's anarchist also admits fear of the lone anarchist individual or the anarchist and, excuse me, and his accomplice whose often cryptic identity made them easy to imagine as anyone. 
The stereotype of the anarchist terrorist as a rebellious outsider was one thing, but what if anarchists lurked in the ranks of the city's law-abiding workers or the proper men of the middle class? This too was a fear, one to which the assassination and the fortifications may speak. Given the circumstances of the era, it wouldn't be difficult for the popular imagination to link the unidentified men in these prints to anarchism. Viewers of the assassination might also recall Rabachol's murder of an elderly hermit asleep in his bed back in 1891. You can see the crime illustrated um, over there on the right. And perhaps, too, Volatone was subtly mocking his viewers in the assassination by echoing their inflated imaginations through his police novel cliches, the murderer's exaggerated lunge, the dramatically raised knife, and the hidden identity of the killer. Finally, the anarchist, the attack, and then here, the demonstration, must be understood in the context of Volatone's status as a Swiss citizen and a foreign national. The day after Ravachol's arrest, the police arrested or detained 32 anarchists, all of them foreigners, and deported many of them. Their names were called from records kept by local mayoral offices where foreigners were required by law to register. Volatone wisely never did so. By 1893, roundups, searches, and interrogations, not only of suspected anarchists, but of all, also of suspicious foreigners, had become near daily events in Paris. Now this surely would have given Volatone pause. It certainly was a concern to one of his friends, the salon painter Philippe Blanche. In July of 1893, he wrote a letter to Volatone in which he mentioned a student demonstration he'd witnessed in the streets of Paris. And by the way, the letter, um, the, the demonstration that he's talking about happened after the date of this particular print. Um, he wrote to Volatone, heated days have passed in the neighborhood lately. I thought of you, buddy. You could have gotten a hard beating. So try to francify yourself in order to be with us, free to observe, to live without risking an escort to the border. Volatone's outsider status also helps explain his unresolved imagery. While his desire for a quiet, orderly life likely made anarchist terrorism as distasteful to him as it was frightening, Volatone knew, in common with many anarchists, what it felt like to be marginalized. He also must have worried about being unjustly singled out by the authorities, like the victims in the anarchist in the attack, whom he may have imagined suffering the same fate. While the demonstration is always read as a crowd of demonstrators fleeing the police, I'd like to propose another reading, equally plausible, I think. It came to me after seeing this detail of the work on the cover of another book about Ravachol. What if we understood the word manifestation to mean a manifestation of something instead of a political demonstration? What if this urban crowd was manifesting its fear of another sort, um, perhaps another threat? Um, perhaps an anarchist, um, perhaps a bomb, like the one you see here in this untitled woodcut by Volatone from 1895. Um, I think the style of this print encourages this sort of a reading. Once again, Volatone has caricatured many of his individuals, exaggerating their portliness, making them look a bit clumsy. He seems to be subtly mocking them, and by extension, Parisians in general, whose fear of anarchists and anarchist bombs was often exaggerated and unfounded. Like so many of Volatone's prints, this one too encourages multiple readings, as do anarchist terrorism and counterterrorism. Seconds before Ravachol's death, he began to utter his last words. Viva la Ré, he shouted, but the syllables that should have followed were reportedly cut short by the guillotine's blade. Surely, he'd intended to finish with révolution, revolution, as many journalists maintained, but others were equally certain the word was république, republic. A reporter wondered, might the utter horror of such a violent death have caused even a staunch activist to renounce his beliefs in a last-ditch effort to save his own life? Maybe, maybe not. The question was never resolved. 
Rafael's last words, like so many of the era's, era's events and actors, remain open to interpretation. Thank you. <laughs>